Hello, I'm uh, John Mulcahy, and welcome to What the Research Says. What the Research Says is a program uh, that we bring to you two times a year in order to provide you as CT professionals with uh, the data and uh, resources you need in order to extol the virtues of career and technical education to whomever you may need to uh, uh, share it with. As such, we take these presentations and we put the presentations on the ACTAZ and the AZCTE leads uh, websites so that you have access to the PowerPoints with all the speaker notes and resources. And incidentally, if you're not aware of it, uh, the leadership continuum AZCTE leads has now moved to the ACTAZ website. So our state association website is stronger than ever and you have all kinds of good information available to you there. Well, let me jump in and share the current research with you about the value and importance of career and technical education. Well, over the last 10 years, there has been an increasing amount of love for career and technical education from legislators to parents to the U.S. Congress, everyone really, really appreciates career and technical education. This year, to show proof of it, I thought I would go to press releases from the U.S. Congress leading up to the passage of Perkins 5. So let's take a look for a moment and see what that looks like. If you would, if you take a look at what happened during the, the long process by which Perkins 5 marched from various committee uh, uh, hearings to approval in the House and finally Senate and Congress being signed by the president in July of 2018, let's just look at what happened to press releases that had something to do with career and technical education. Well, first off, if you look in the House of Representatives as we march from 2014 all the way out to today, now this is beyond the passage of the act, you can see that there is an increasing amount of press releases that mention career and technical education. Now, I would say as I look at this with red representing Republican press re releases and blue being Democrat press releases, that you can see that the Republicans probably won the race for our love in the House. As you take a look at the Senate, I'd have to say there that it looks fairly even, but I'd probably give the contest to the Democrats. The point is that if you watch this over time, there's just an increasing amount of love for career and technical education. And my friends, if we can find love in the U.S. Congress, then we can find it anywhere. But it doesn't just end there. As all of you know, going back to the Great Recession in 2008, it was a time when parents and, and students and college-bound students really began to ask questions about, what should my education be if I'm going to be in a situation where I can support myself? And so it's no surprise that today some 94% of parents approve of expanding career and technical other, uh, education. Uh, it, it's, it's really quite an outstanding uh, statistic. We know, too, that some 86% of parents say that schools in their community should offer a certificate or licensing programs that qualify students for employment. And they are saying this, even if it means that students should curtail some of the traditional core subjects they've had. It's really quite a sea change. In Arizona, looking back on some data that's now a couple of years old, but still very, very telling, eight out of 10 Arizonans favor expanding career and technical education. All the way around, there's a lot of love for career and tech ed. Well, every year as we do these presentations, we also list some national presentations that have talked about CTE as a way of uh, indicating how much love there is, but it also provides you with a good reading list. I have for a couple of years been recommending How the Other Half Learns by Orrin Cass. It's not a very long publication, but it's certainly a great read and will provide you with some good statistics. I urge you to read it. 
if you have some interest in in this broader issue of career-based learning and how states can make efforts to bring career-based learning to their constituents, I urge you to look at the second one, Making the Leap by Bain and Company. But as you go down through here, you'll find just a host of other outstanding publications, all of which are worth reading. Georgetown University's Center on Education and the Workforce constantly turns out extremely important uh, publications for career and technical education and workforce development. This past year, Dr. McCole Smith's work on the pandemic and the impact of the pandemic on, uh, on workforce development and particularly career and technical education is also excellent material to read. But you'll see a number of other good uh, uh, resources on this list, all of which show a great deal of love for career and technical education. And as we always say, it's no surprise that so many people are getting on the bandwagon because as you and I know, CTE works. Well, let's uh, just review some facts before we jump into a, a few more uh, recent uh, research studies. First off, great things happening in Arizona. Some of this is pre-pandemic data, but hats off to all of you for the job that you do in bringing nearly 80% of concentrators to pass their state technical assessments. These are challenging times and you continue to do an extraordinary job. And we really need to tip our hats also to the excellent leadership coming from the Department of Education. Appreciate all of your good work. At the national level, we know that we have an ever increasing number of students involved in career and technical education. And I think we can safely predict that these numbers, at least as a percentage of the whole, will continue to rise. School enrollment uh, overall will decline, uh, pri primarily because our population is declining. But uh, we should note that CTE enrollment will almost certainly continue to increase. Nearly half concentrate and nearly half are female. So on whole, we, we've just about uh, achieved gender equity. So we have some work to do, as you know, in particular programs. At the post-secondary level, so much good news about the excellent work that our community college brethren do. We have nearly 3 million learners across the country are involved in CTE programs at post-secondary levels, primarily uh, community colleges. And, and we know that their completion rate uh, for CTE programs is, is nearly double that uh, for all two-year institutions. And we know too that 86% of adult CTE learners either continue in their education or employed within six months. That is just outstanding. One other piece that surfaced this year that I think we should take great pride in and we should tell everyone who will listen is this. High school CTE students are more likely to have post high school plans than their peers not involved in CTE. As educators, probably one of the most painful things for us is to be at graduation, to have a student cross the stage and as they come off the stage, ask them what they're planning to do next year and they say, I don't know. Well, the good news is that CTE students do know. And this is a piece of information that we sh share with everyone who will listen. CTE students are more likely to have post-secondary plans than non-CTE students. At the end of the day, it's what we all want. All right, well, let's take a look at the educational system if we can. You know, anytime we ask people, what is it that you want from the educational system, they ultimately in different words perhaps, but they're ultimately going to tell you, we want students to be engaged. We want them to come to school every day and graduate on time. We want them to achieve. We want them to, to be able to learn and write and use math and, and to be able to use science, to be good citizens, et cetera. And finally, they want them to move on to worthy post-secondary destinations. Well, around those three themes, engagement, achievement and transition, let's see how CTE does. First off, with regard to engagement, we know and we have been saying this for years that the graduation rate for CTE students is significantly better than it is for students on whole. As we have said again and again and again, CTE is the finest dropout prevention program in the country and it comes with its own funding stream. 
the percentage differences between CT students and non-CT students vary by state. In Arkansas, from a study done in 2016 with 100,000 students, fairly large study, the difference between CT students and non-CT students for graduation rates was 21 percentage points. Here in Arizona, take a look at this. The high school graduation rate for students on whole is 78%. But for CTE students, it's 96%. You're darn near guaranteed to graduate if you're a CTE student. So what else could we hope for? If you want kids to come to school and graduate on time, put them in CTE. Well, let's look at achievement. What impact does CTE have on student achievement? Well, for years, we've been talking about data from the College Board because it's so impressive. The data clearly show that reading and math scores of students involved in CT are higher than those of students overall. And we know from Indiana that's done just a particularly good job with some of their studies is that uh, CT concentrators uh, outperform non-CT students by 10 percentage points on algebra exams. And that's no surprise to us because the, we know that students involved in CTE apply their academic learning, and as such, it's tattooed on their brains. And last year, we shared with you some FFA data. And while I take some particular joy in this as a former FFA advisor, I'm certain that this is true of career and technical education students overall, which is that their ACT and SAT scores are higher than students overall. If you want students to do better academically, to obtain those academic competencies and to be able to use them and apply them, then get them involved in career and technical education. And then there's the issue of transition. We want students to move on to worthy post-secondary uh, destinations, whether it be the world of work or post-secondary education. And what can CTE do to help? Well, first off, we know from a national study and from the U.S. Department of Education that some 91% of high school graduates who earn two to three CTE credits enrolled in college. In days of old, you know, if you were college material, you were discouraged from being in CTE. Now that we can see that CTE is possibly the best college prep program in American high schools. And just of interest to me, going back to Indiana again, is that their CTE concentrators were less than half as likely to need remedial education in college. Hmm, that learning sticks when you're involved in CTE. Here in Arizona, looking at uh, data from last uh, year, I want to congratulate you again as we look at the numbers for the completer studies. And it's just most impressive, particularly as we were look at some of our most vulnerable populations, the excellent, excellent work that you do in helping our students to graduate on time and move on to worthy post-secondary destinations. Thank you for your work. From um, Bridging the Skills Gap from the U.S. Department of Education, Here's another good piece of information. Eight years after their expected graduation, students who focused on CTE courses while in high school not only had a higher median annual earnings, and remember, eight years is quite a way is out from high school, uh, it, they were more, far more likely to be employed. So just really some outstanding data from the U.S. Department of Education. While we're talking about transitions, I think it's just good to continue to remind folks that the majority of jobs in Arizona, about 55%, and nationally, about 53%, are in what we call these um, new collar jobs. These jobs requiring more than a high school diploma, meaning an industry credential, an associate's degree, et cetera, but less than a baccalaureate. So it's where the majority of jobs are. It's that sweet spot that CTE really does a wonderful job with. Well to keep in mind as we talk about transitions. All right, well, let's take a moment and look at some challenges we have in American education uh, in society in general and see what role CTE might take in addressing these. First off, we really need to take a moment and look at what's happened in Arizona. Now, these are pre-COVID data. 
But as you look at these pre-COVID data, you can see that we have some work to do in Arizona and that what you do, career and technical education, is the answer. First off, look at our unemployment and underemployment ratings with the rest of the nation. We are near the bottom. We are 38th in home ownership, which is a good measure of economic independence. Uh, and of course, our rural communities are hit so much higher. We do have the fifth highest minimum wage in the country, a, a topic of lots of conversation uh, at the present time in the US Congress. But look at that final point. Governor Ducey has said, and he has said throughout his tenure as a governor of Arizona, that we need to make sure people have the skills they need for the jobs that are available. And of course, that means that students, all students need to be involved in career and technical education while they are in high school. And those who do not get that opportunity or wish to extend that opportunity need to be taking advantage of our outstanding community colleges CTE programs. A theme that we have addressed for years and years and has only, only been made, uh, made worse, if you will, by the pandemic and the Great Recession is the cost of college. We know that the cost of college has just outstripped the ability of most people to pay for it, which is why there is so much talk around relieving uh, student uh, debt. But look at this, since 1980, tuition fees at public four-year universities and colleges have risen 19 times faster than average family incomes. Uh, there was a day, decades ago now, when it was possible to have a part-time job while you were going to school, a full-time job in the summer, and, and pay for post-secondary education. But that has largely passed. And it's something for us to keep in mind as we talk about those worthy destinations for students after graduation from high school. And it's why our community college system is so, so very critical. We also want to keep in mind that there is increasingly a diminishing financial return on higher education. And this is talking specifically about four-year degrees. Now, I do not mean to diminish the value of a four-year degree, nor do I mean to suggest that we should measure these things only in terms of economics. But it is well to remember that if that is your primary concern, then two-year programs may be a better option. The impact of COVID on post-secondary education has been particularly difficult. Normally, when we think about a recession, we think that enrollments would jump up at community colleges. That has not been the case during the pandemic. And our poor community college brethren, who not only expected enrollments would go up during a downturn in the economy, but were also told that students would be less likely to go to four-year universities and more likely to stay at home. And as it turned out, none of that happened. So community colleges has really had a difficult time during the pandemic. I think it's well too to keep in mind uh, that this has been an impact, particularly on low income students. And if you'll look at this, look at how many students coming from low income students, uh, schools rather, have decided not to move on to post-secondary education. There's quite a sea change during the pandemic uh, in terms of what people are thinking about post-secondary education. And in a short summary, what this is really telling us is that people are increasingly interested in short-term skilled training. That too is a sea change. Might note too that even prior to the pandemic, we were seeing a situation where students with college degrees were either unemployed or underemployed. So this too is part of the story. Well, we talked about post-secondary education, but I think we need to be very honest with ourselves about the value of a high school diploma alone. We know that increasingly jobs requiring only a high school diploma are decreasing. And we know that the income for students with only a high school diploma are decreasing dramatically, which is why it is absolutely critical that every student in America 
have the chance to complete a CTE program while they're in high school. So they graduate not only with a high school diploma, which has decreasing economic value, but they graduate with an industry recognized credential, which we know has increasing value in the economy. Any student with a high school diploma is alone, alone is vulnerable. And this is very, very recent information about 2020 job losses. And you can see that the pandemic was the hardest on children of color and was the hardest on people with a high school diploma only. So once again, we need those CTE credentials. Just to hit on a few other themes, we know that we have a boy problem in the United States. Aaron Parsons, Berontocles, and more recently, Patrick Clausen have presented widely on this topic and reminded us that the answer to the boy problem in the United States, that problem being that they're less likely to graduate, more likely to have disciplinary issues, less likely to move on to post-secondary education, more likely to be incarcerated, the answer is CTE, and this Brookings Institute study illustrates that. Boys in CTE have better ninth grade attendance, better 10th grade scores, higher graduation rates, and higher quarterly earnings at the age of 23. It is the answer, but it's not just a boy problem. We know we have a young man problem as well. And as you can see here, some 18% of uh, men aged 25 to 54 don't have full-time work. And this was before the recession. And as Orrin Cass reminds us, men without work harm themselves, their families and society broadly. It appears that women know better. So we need to get both young boys and young men involved in career and technical education. One other theme we've talked about in recent years is the collapse of the youth labor market, and I won't belabor it here, but all the information here just clearly illustrates that we need to get students involved in work-based learning, which means they need to be involved in career and technical education. There is simply a decreasing opportunity for students to move from the predictable environment, which is school, to that unpredictable environment, which is the world of work, and they need that training while they are young. So one way to make that happen is to get them involved in CTE, where they'll have an opportunity through clinical experiences, supervised agricultural experience, internships, and more to get work-based learning. I mentioned earlier that we have a declining population in the United States. In fact, in the, the last decade, we've had the lowest population uh, uh, growth rate in, in our history uh, due to the baby bust and also due to the declining number of immigrants that we've let into the United States. This is a human resource issue with far reaching effects, particularly for old folks like me who are gonna need somebody taking care of them. But it's bigger than that, of course. This is something we'll need to look at and plan for because in the future, there will be less students in our schools and less students to get into our CTE programs. But I continue to predict that the percentage of students involved in CTE will increase and that will help. Well, since the uh, last two years, we have continued to share this data about what happens to students. And as I look at this particular slide, I would simply summarize what we know is that for 40% of our students, high school is our last chance to provide them with the skills they need for the lives they want. So they need to be involved in CTE. We get a lot of advice around community college and for our wonderful school counselors in the audience they may be interested in some of this information i know it doesn't apply to the people in our audience but 40 years ago 32 percent of counselors and teachers advised all students to go to college and just 10 years later that percentage had doubled now again not suggesting for a moment that students shouldn't go to college and not suggesting for a moment that they should move on to community colleges simply suggesting that the four-year degree as we have seen from all these data 
may no longer be the best option for everyone. And it's interesting too to note that uh, over 40% of first-time full-time students who started college in the fall of 2012 failed to graduate from four-year programs. And the research suggests they didn't graduate because they were not intrinsically motivated. They were extrinsically motivated, possibly by their parents. But CTE sends students to college with intrinsic motivation, and that is highly critical. A little more research talking to people about what if I lost my job. This is fairly recent during the pandemic. About a third of adults have indicated they would change careers. And two thirds are saying again, they would be involved in short term training at community colleges and proprietary institutions as well. And the majority of American workers now say they prefer non-degree and skill-based education and training programs. Quite a change for higher education. Well, every year we talk a bit about poverty and I can't conclude without doing so. The solution to poverty in America is for all students to be involved in career and technical education. And fortunately, a large percentage of students are involved in our high school programs who are economically disadvantaged. And even more of them are doing so at the post-secondary level. And this is critical because we cannot have a better America without ending poverty. And the path to ending poverty runs right through career and technical education classrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, conclude every year by saying that we can do better as a society in terms of how we educate our young men and women. We need to reinvent American high schools to make a diploma relevant to the economy. All students, every single student who walks through the high, uh, hallways of American high schools needs to be involved in career and technical education. And it's so critical that those be programs of high quality that lead to industry credentials that truly have currency in the world of work. Here's the opportunity, the one I just keep thinking about. Less than half of young adults earn a bachelor's degree, associate's degree, or an industry recognized credential by the age of 30. These young men and women are destined to live in poverty, destined to not know the American dream. These are the folks we're here to help. They'll be helped if every student in America has an opportunity to experience a CTE program that includes quality classroom instruction where the theory is presented, hands-on instruction where they get to apply that theory, career-based experiences or work-based learning where they get to bridge the gap from school to work, and leadership development through a CTSO. If we can put all that together, then these students are on to economic independence. The answer is for CTE to take over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. Take care.